Quantum computers will alter our society, treating illness and fixing the climate catastrophe, argues the physicist and sci-fi aficionado. But can they be made to work? Have you recently experienced anxiety related to technology? If that's the case, you're not alone. The UN has asked all states to enact regulations aimed at controlling artificial intelligence. Prominent figures, including Elon Musk and Yuval Noah Harari, signed an open letter urging the suspension of research into the most sophisticated AI and the implementation of safeguards to keep it safe, trustworthy, and loyal. These aches came after ChatGPT, a chatbot that can create recipes for anything you happen to have in your pantry that evening and write you an essay on Milton was introduced last year. However, what if the computers utilized to create artificial intelligence were swapped out for ones that could calculate calculations trillions of times faster? What if things that would take modern equipment hundreds of years to complete could be finished in a couple of seconds? Well, scientist Mikio Kaku is forecasting just that scenario. He thinks that the digital era is about to give way to a quantum period that will bring about unthinkable changes in science and society. Computers, instead of transistors, will use subatomic particles to perform calculations, releasing a tremendous amount of processing power. It has been compared to putting a rocket engine in your car by another physicist. What is your current state of mind? Kaku gives off a laid-back, even boosterish, vibe about the whole thing. He uses Zoom to communicate with me from his Upper West Side apartment in Manhattan. At the age of 76, he has given up on research to continue teaching at the City University of New York, where he holds the position of Professor of Theoretical Physics and enjoys all the fun stuff. A devotee of Isaac Asimov, he tells me that he's currently teaching a course on the physics of science fiction. I talk about what is known and not known about time travel, space warps, the multiverse, all the things you see in Marvel comics, I break it down. He is referred to as a futurist and popularizer of science on his website, and his most recent book, Quantum Supremacy, outlines all the benefits of quantum computing with very few drawbacks. His long white hair, evocative of a mad scientist, is swept back attractively. He speaks with the tempo of a practiced lecturer, with the odd outbreak of mild bemusement raising his voice a little higher. For those who are spreading fear about ChatGPT, Kaku offers a straightforward explanation. Journalists are hyperventilating about chatbots because they see that their job is on the line. In the past, a lot of jobs have been in jeopardy, but nobody has really spoken up about them. Journalists are currently directly in the line of fire. This is only one side of the story. According to a recent Goldman Sachs analysis, 300 million jobs could be automated due to AI. Although Kaku concedes that it might take another century or two, he believes that sentient machines may eventually emerge from labs. He believes there are plenty of reasons to be happy in the interim. According to Kaku, the quantum computing engine will revolutionize studies in physics, biology, and chemistry and have a wide range of ramifications. Among other things, it will allow us to catch and reuse waste products, a process known as carbon recycling, in order to convert CO2 from the atmosphere into fuel. It will enable us to remove nitrogen from the atmosphere without the extreme heat and pressure that causes the manufacturing of fertilizers to now consume 2% of all energy used on Earth, sparking a new green revolution. We'll be able to produce extremely efficient batteries as a result of advancing renewable energy sources. The energy stored in gasoline is only 1% of what is carried by today's lithium-ion batteries. It will address the technical and technological issues preventing us from using nuclear fusion to produce cheap, plentiful power right now. It will also result in a plethora of additional medications, including drastically improved therapies for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and cancer. How? The most important thing to realize is that quantum computers are far faster at calculations than digital ones. Qubits, the quantum analog of bits, 
The zeros and ones that represent information in a traditional computer are used to do this. Qubits are attributes of particles, like the angular momentum of an electron, whereas bits are electrical charges recorded in transistors etched onto silicon chips. Because the rules of classical physics do not apply in the strange subatomic world, qubits possess superior firepower. This allows them to take any value between 0 and 1 and facilitates a mysterious process known as quantum entanglement, which Einstein famously dubbed spooky action at a distance, or spumint fernwerkum. Although Kaku goes to great lengths in his book to explain these mechanics, it is practically hard for the average individual to fully understand. In one of her immensely famous YouTube videos on the topic, science communicator Sabine Hassenfelder states, we have to translate mathematical statements into language when we write about quantum mechanics. Furthermore, no matter what language we speak, English, German, Chinese or any other, our language did not develop to explain quantum behavior. All we have left are inconsistently useful analogies, like the mice in the maze and the toy trains with compasses on them that Kaku uses to explain concepts as intricate as path integrals and superposition. Beyond all of this, one key lesson is that since reality is quantum, quantum computers are able to imitate it more accurately than digital ones. He says, Mother Nature does not compute digitally. Since the quantum principle is the language of nature, quantum computers should be able to unravel the secrets of matter, the secrets of the universe, and the secrets of life. Let's say you're curious about the specifics of photosynthesis, which is still outside the reach of modern science, or the interactions between different proteins in the human body. If so, you will be able to model it accurately using a quantum computer's virtual lab. Designing drugs to interrupt biological processes gone awry, like the multiplication of cancer cells or the misfolding of proteins in Alzheimer's disease, could become much easier. Kaku even believes that we will be able to stop aging. One of his book's chapters is titled Immortality, and that the mystery of aging will be solved. It's vital to note a crucial disclaimer at this point. The creation of quantum computers is extremely difficult. Most of them can only function at temperatures near absolute zero, where everything slows down, and there is less environmental noise because they depend on microscopic particles that are incredibly sensitive to any form of disturbance. It is, as one might anticipate, rather challenging to arrange. There are currently 433 qubits in IBM's Osprey, the world's most sophisticated quantum computer. The company notes that the number of classical bits that would be necessary to represent a state on the Osprey processor far exceeds the total number of atoms in the known universe, which may not seem like much. They fail to mention that it is only effective for 70 to 80 millionths of a second until noise overwhelms it. Furthermore, there are extremely few applications for the computations it is capable of performing. A workable quantum computer that can solve real-world problems is still many years in the future, as Kaku himself observes. Some physicists, like Michael Diakonov of the University of Montpellier, think there is little likelihood that a quantum computer that could compete with your laptop will ever be developed due to technological difficulties. Kaku dismisses this. He makes reference to the massive funding being allocated to quantum research, stating that the gold rushes on, as well as the warnings issued by intelligence services about the necessity of preparing for the quantum age. That's not exactly evidence that they will live up to the hype. It might just be tulip fever instead of a gold rush. Sighing, he says, life's a gamble. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative, then don't forget to hit that like button below. And if you want to stay updated with more great content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the red button and just ringing the notification bell so you never miss any future content from us. Your support means the world to us.